Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here. I've got another Eagle Moss Starship, Star Trek Starship review. This time is issue 144, which is the Gum 2. This has been from the um, Next Generation Series 3, I think it was. Was it? Oh, yeah, it was Tam Elberon. We got in touch with the um, Gum 2 space probe thingy, whatever it was. So I'm getting it unbagged and we'll get on with a review of this. So there we go, out of the bag. I'll leave the model for the time being. A little bit folded, but when you're a month and a half behind, thank you Eagle Moss, and you don't really get much of a choice when they send it. Yes, so I've got four issues in one go, as well as a, a, a special as well. So they sent it all in one go. So I think there's, there's problems yet again with Eagle Moss. So let's get on with this. Come to was a space probe kind of living being that was psychic was kind of psychically linked to Tam Albrun. 600 meters right along telepathic several humanoids normally yeah because it wanted a family on board but it had been uh, kind of a, a, a it'd been on its own for so long and it wanted to die so it put itself next to a supernova where it was going to blow up Kind of looks like a seed husk. That's not the front, that's its arse. There's the front over there. But it wanted to sort of like wanted to die because it had been lonely and left on its own, and then it met up with, with Tam, who was a betazoid. And yeah, Tim Man, yeah, episode. And it kind of linked with him and it wanted to be its protector. Then Tam had got problems because he was a full switched on betazoid, couldn't turn off the the, um, the voices, the tele. tele telepathic link with anybody else so he just this was a perfect choice for him because he could link to one thing only and it was perfect for Tim Man Gum 2 to um, be with one person so there's Tam Elbrun there he's been in other stuff before I think he was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer he's been in God knows what other else stuff he was inside the ship a very organic ship strange oddball thing there was a problem with the Vulca uh, Romulans as well where they actually wanted the technology of this they were going to strip it down and, and kill it and use it for whatever the Romulans wanted to do but Federation helped out he vanished they're not much known I wouldn't think on how the actual gum to thing is it looks kind of like a weird shaped piece of wood but it looks like only a human command section on the front so you'd guess this is probably all you'd go into energy wave producer organic outer component if you went inside you'd be inside a, a living being and energy parts as it is it's activated very strange alien thing which is good because it, it, it's the unknown which defines us all and if there wasn't a question of hmm what if then you'd never know, but it kind of looks like this front section was originally tendrils on the front, possibly, and then a, a part section there, or maybe a cut section that is bolted to the front of it, but they, they, they stuck onto the end idea. I never actually realised this was a cabin, but whether or not it was part of the ship originally or not, whether or not it was added on afterwards, I don't know. So you've got different costume designs. Series 3 brought a bit more of a different costume, more of a uniform tie with the jacket, the collar, more, less of a, of a jumpsuit. We had episodes in there, Yes is Enterprise as well, with the uh, return of Tasha Yar. Guinan's uniform become a bit more elaborate. Diana Troy, a bit more of a dressy uniform. Well, dress more than uniform, to be honest. And Worf showing a lot more of the Klingon side of him. A lot of good episodes in Series 3. You had Vash, very interesting, and the Ferengi. That was part of the Toxutat, Captain's Holiday episode. Were they the Volons? See, was it Vol... Yeah, because there were the Volgons. Was it Vol... Yeah, the Volgons were from the 27th century. There was some sort of energy, sort of crystal -y thing. The Volons were in Babylon 5. We also had Best of Both Worlds Part 1 as a series finale when Picard got took over by the Borg. Next episode, Nightingale. 
it looks very much like a uh, peregrine class, which I think it is, just made a lot bigger, but we'll get to that one on the next video. So yeah, the Tin Man. Come to magazine. So let's have a look at the actual ship itself. So let's get this out. Come to Tin Man, 7200-A slash A. This is the first series one. First run, I think it is. Get a bit of light back on here. Now this looks like, it feels like a, a big peanut. I don't think there's anything metal on here. This feels very hollow. Stand on this. Hey, you don't think this is meant to do anything problem. Just sit on it like the shuttlecrafts do. Front or back, I don't know. Put it right way around. There's nothing actually that looks like it would actually sit on it properly, maybe there, behind that ridge. But let's get that away. I don't like the stands anyway. I don't do well with the stands. Can't even put it back in the... Um... Nope, I don't want to go in. I can't get it away, but here we go. <sighs> So we get a good close-up view of the cabin there. There's a lot of markings on this. And they're, they're painted on parts of the energy parts. It's like a giant fingerprint. That's the back end here. There's a definite, definite join line there. I've come to. Not exactly joined properly either. The definite top and a bottom section. This bit of joined okay. Uh, that's over. That's just ridiculous. So, yeah, sections here. They're just not lined up properly at all. There's been little on the idea of two sections got together. Apart from this line here, which helps the production join up two sections. Other than that, not many of the yellows actually line up properly. Do from the bottom end. It's a good pattern, a very wood grainy sort of pattern. Orangey yellow. In fact, it's more orange. In fact, it doesn't even show what I'm seeing. That's more yellowy, sort of tanny coloured than anything, but it's showing. It, it is an orange, very much like a Ferengi ship sort of orange. Possible windows down there. Looks like. A, 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 Potentially say this the size of a shuttlecraft, but I don't know. You look at that way, you think, oh, he's got happy eyes and a happy smile, like a hedgehog. A flat front. Yeah, joined, not, 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 joined, joined, possibly. Mm. Uh, no, yes, maybe, no, no, don't know. So the bit of a lot of it doesn't join, a lot of it does. So, but it's, it's kind of, it is all plastic. It feels like there's something inside here. That if you could get it open, there would be maybe some sort of metal. In. There's always a piece of metal in these, so it might be good. That's why it gives it a little bit of weight that there's maybe a metal structure inside here. But you're never going to split this open. But knowing Eagle Moss's quality of lately, that might actually fall to pieces pretty soon anyway. So. Size-wise, very much small. Barely the size of the palm of my hand. But we expect too much anyway. That's quite... It's not a bad textured-wise sort of ship. A lot of... Well, I'd say probably brushed over work. Maybe rubbed over work with the, the paint, the darkened sections. Yeah, okay. It's not bad. Just a bit weird that it looks like a, a strange space hedgehog from the front. Snappy smile, but it's meant to be that way around. That just makes it look stupid. So, happy smiley hedgehog with a flat nose. But yeah, it's not bad. It's just not... Yeah, there's not much you can do with that, because it is a kind of a, a strange space whale anyway. So, yeah. I mean, we've got other space whales coming soon. I think there's a Vija probe coming soon. 
not the actual space room from Star Trek Four, which would have been interesting. But there's no, there's nothing on there for actually they're doing that anyway. So it's the first one of the space alien beings, less than a starship. So there you go. Right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and other gubbins. Consider being a Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.